guys, what is going on, Blossoms? Back, welcome back to another episode of Tap Drives. We've got another Tri Series final. Pretty cool card, the Pininfarina. Oh no, I shouldn't just say that. I'll say I'll go the full name. Otto Mobili, Pininfarina Batista. And of course, you got some pretty cool packs in the store that you need to open to get you this prize card. Now, here's the interesting thing: we've got different stakes for this tri series than a regular tri series. And why is that? Because we've got an update coming, right? So then people are torn. They're just like, oh my god, do I wanna do wanna keep my gold and, and save it for the new update, or do I wanna spend my gold and try and get this pretty cool prize car i'm not gonna say super cool but it's pretty cool it might be really good they've not shared any times yet to my knowledge well i'll tell you right now i can't answer the question for you but i can answer the question for myself i know that in the in the upcoming update there's gonna be about a hundred over like i think 104 Audis, and I don't give a shit. So, like, if I were you, I could just go for the pack. Um, but anyway, Platinum. Is it a good pack? Is it a bad pack? It's definitely what you need to open to get yourself the prize card. We'll go into the Tri Series right now. We'll jump into events. Um, and as you can see over here, the Automobile Pininfarina Batista Finals. And uh, as you can see, the track sets are like so. Again, I'm really happy to say that there's no off-road, but there is this one bogey track set that requires two medium ground clearance cars. So you kind of have to ask yourself, am I running two mediums or am I gonna run one medium and the rest low and just, you know, suck it up for that last track set. So there are many things to think about. This is currently what I'm running. So I'm currently going with a fully upgraded 330D a fully upgraded Porsche Panamera, I'm going for a fully upgraded M3 competition, and I'll be upgrading this M3, M3 competition saloon as well, and then I'm also going to fully upgrade this Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. So, um, one thing I want to say though, is do not be overconfident with this final. I think a lot of people think that they're going to have a good chance at this final. I will tell you right now, with what I got, I think it's going to be a pretty hard fight. Uh, with three max legends and two max epics, I think it's going to be a pretty hard fight. Because you need to remember, a lot of these cars have been used in previous Tri-Series before. The sole reason that I have this fully upgraded was because of a Tri-Series. The sole reason that I have this fully upgraded is, again, for a Tri-Series. The Hennessy Venom, right? F5. Um, and honestly, this was a passion project, but I'm kind of happy uh, that that is going to be useful now. And the second one, I'll take it, dude. I'm a saloon collector. I will take it. I will max the second one without a doubt. This was used in multiple tri series as well. If we jump into all cars, there are many tri series where you could have had the chance of getting the Lancer. The previous tri series that we just had literally was 2004. You had a chance getting it then, you have a chance getting it now. Um, so there are a lot of people that have a lot of cars and therefore there are a lot of people thinking that they're gonna, you know, have a really good time. And you know what? Don't be over, don't be too cocky about it, right? Remember, the RQ limit is 425, so you can't run an entire hand of full legendaries, but as always, let's get into the pack review. Okay, so as always, you guys know, two different tri series how good everything is in a tri-series standpoint, just for the prize car, and how good the cars are in a general standpoint. Now, the best possible hand, if you don't run duplicates, single unique cars only, would be what I have over here. The BMW 750i, um, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8 WRC, the RQ89, not the 91, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 6 RS, the Mazda 6 Sky Active D, as well as the BMW M3 Competition Saloon. Now, the reason why this car did not make the list is because if you add in the Lancer and you take out the 89, that adds up to what I believe is 426 out of 425. So you can't run that, right, in, in, in the final. So you gotta be strategic with what cars you wanna use. So this adds up to, I think, 424. Um, so if you want to run the Lancer, you're going to have to take out maybe the 750. You might have to take out the Sky Active, this, that, and the third. So yeah, that's the best possible hand, in my opinion. Uh, possible prize car winning. I mean, a lot of these cars mix and match how you will. They're going to win you the prize car as well, I believe. Especially that Lancer WRC04 and the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution X. Both these cars, they're going to give you a decent shot. I got this one, um, one star. I don't want to fully upgrade it. I'll try to get by with the Porsche Panamera. Now, it's, it's a bit sad though, because these two cars are the same damn RQ. And this is where it really showcases Hutch's inability to balance shit correctly, right? Because the Panamera and the Mitsubishi, same damn RQ87, but the handling difference of four, it's insane. 
3688 to 3684. I get it, once 190, once 155. But at the end of the day, the reason to why we're even considering these two cars in the Tri Series is because of the city streets. Not because of the drag, but because of the city streets. And that's all there is to these medium ground clearance cars most of the time. You're only gonna use them on specific track sets. And on those track sets, the Lancer is always gonna be better. And I think you need to be judging these cars based off the track sets that there are gonna be majority majority used on, right? Or used on majority of the time. So these two cars cannot be 87, they are, but it is what it is. Um, some other really good cars would include the M3 G80 Competition M. I love this. I mean, since Enter the Black Forest, I've been wanting to unpack one. The day will come one day, I think. Uh, some of the better epics and some of the better legendaries. With an easier bracket, you'll get by with the mid to high range epics and the Lancer Evolution, just because this thing is such a fantastic ultra rare. Shot in the dark, your lower end epics, your crappy legends. You know what? I'm going to continue the trend on hitting on this Audi A8. I'm just going to bring it down to lol GG. Um, but yeah, everything else here, shot in the dark. I don't think you're going to have a good chance of all of these, mainly because the saturation, the competition is humongous. Um, for this final not to mention as or not to mention but I've mentioned earlier that a lot of players already have these cars Last but not least lol GG, right? If you have if you have any of these cars, I don't think they're gonna win you the tri-series um, Unless you do some weird voodoo crap where you run four legends and you can't run an epic I don't think that's possible even if you ran the highest range legends I don't think that you would not be able to have enough RQ left over to not use an epic. But maybe if you got some voodoo lineup with like four max legends, you could probably bring on like a Mitsubishi GSR evolution for the ride, you know? Um, but for, for the main story, uh, these cars aren't going to win you much. Anyway, let's move on to how I rate these cars in a general sense. So, as always, our ranks, highly versatile, rightly rated, requires some criteria, severely overrated, and bro, they made it the only option. We're going to start off the ultra rares, the Holden Callius. Bro, they made it the only option. Um, the last time that I used this ultra rare was for... <laughs> What the hell, what, what what hell of an update did this even come in? It was APGP, right? I think it was the APGP Trials. It was the APGP Trials, the Ultra Air Trials, where I needed to use five fully upgraded Ultra Rears. And the only reason why I used it was because it was one of the few APGP Ultra Rears I had at the time. Literally since the APGP Trials, I've not used the Goliath since. Um, and that's like a year now, maybe? I don't know, but yeah, they made it the only option. Uh, we got the Bifori Geneva's next, uh, pretty rare to have, you know, Malaysian cars in top drives. These two are really heavy, I mean, people always say, uh, and I agree, if they're just Malaysian boats. Not gonna use them. Um, I think that the Geneva is probably maybe the only option. The Geneva 6.4 is severely overrated. The thing about the 6.4 is that it's actually okay on a city street small. I believe it's like one of the best, if not the best. I think top three are Q51s and below for City Street Small. That's the only accolade it has. So, you know, what I think that the 6.4 has over the Geneva, the 52, is that the 51 is at least the best within its RQ. The 52 isn't for City Street Small. It's, it's a very minute difference. But hey, those kind of things. I mean, think about F1, right? 0 0.03 might be all the difference of winning and losing. Um, okay, Mitsubishi Lancer, 1600 GSR rally car. Of course, some criteria, but you know, there, there'll be places to use it. The fact that it's a 70s car, medium ground clearance, off-road tires, 84 handling we maxed it out. It'll bring value. Audi A4, saloon. Um, the rule of thumb is that if you're an Audi, you're useless, but if you're four-wheel drive and standard, not bad. I mean, we max both those cars out. It's 84 handling as well. You're gonna get some value out of them. I would say it requires some criteria. They're not the worst thing in the world. Mazda 6 Grand Touring. I'm gonna say severely overrated. Um, the Sonata. Ooh, I'm gonna say, bro, they made it the only option. It handles less than the Mazda. And honestly, I would only use those cars in twisty scenarios. I wouldn't use it in drag scenario. I don't care that the Hyundai is lower zero to 60 or a higher top speed. It's still not going to be my first choice. I'm going to be using a Maybach. Even if it was a front wheel drive only competition, then I wouldn't even use a stem tire. I would just use a performance tire one. Or maybe like an Auto Delta or something like that. Uh, Holden HSB Senator is up next. Bro, they made it the only option. Again, BMW 840i. I mean, back in the day, highly versatile. It got a handling cut. It got nerfed, right? I still think it's a great medium ground clearance, rear wheel drive, like dual drive. 
um, German city car. I'll give it rightly rates it though. Um, it's not what it used to be, unfortunately. It got nerfed. BMW 550i, severely overrated. The Hyundai Genesis, I would say, requires some criteria. As long as you're Korean, you're gonna have some form of niche because there are not a lot of Korean cars in the game. So whenever you have a Korean event, you're gonna be doubling back to the same cars over and over and over. Unlike if it's, there's a German event, you know, you've got like soon to be three million Audis to choose from. I'm not looking forward to the next update whatsoever. Um, you got all the BMWs, you got, you know, the two Mercs because Hutch just doesn't want to license Mercedes for some reason. Um, and just like some Opals and Minis and here and that. Uh, Mazda 6 MPS Concept is up next. Four wheel drive, 87 handling, saloon, severely overrated. Hyundai Elantra N, widely rated. Good one. I do use it from time to time. I like that. It, it is a better version of the BMW 840i now because they got the same stats. Hyundai, little more MRA, I believe. Definitely a little more handling, bone medium ground clearance. Um, yeah, it's, it's a good one. Uh, Hyundai Genesis 3.8 sedan. Rural drive, yeah, again, bro, they made it the only option. Mitsubishi Lancer GSR Evolution, that's pretty decent. I'll give it rightly rates. It's a lightweight, four wheel drive, medium ground clearance boy with, you know, decent handling. I respect that. I would say that the Mitsubishi is only behind uh, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution 8 GT A. That thing is highly versatile, as well as the Mazda Speed Atenza. Those two are fantastic. Um, the Mitsubishi being slightly better, but they're both very respectable ultra rares. And until today, I have never unpacked this Mitsubishi, and God do I want to, because this thing is fantastic. The 530E Saloon, again, why the hell is it 63? I do not understand. The Mazda 6, uh, 626 MPS. Ooh, severely overrated requires some criteria. I'm gonna say severely overrated. Um, uh, BMW M235, the car that I always think is medium ground clearance, but it actually isn't, it's actually low ground clearance. Um, the zero to 60 isn't too bad, handling isn't too bad, but ultimately I think it's a jack of all trades, master of none. I'm gonna put it in require some criteria. The BMW 760, bro, they made it the only option. Um, I will always remember when people told me that this thing had amazing MRI. And maybe it did for like a short amount of time, but dude, the thing, this thing has no MRI. Moving on to the epics, we'll get through the trash really quickly. The Mazda Zetas is severely overrated. That thing is an ultra, it would be pretty cool. Um, but again, as a 65, you're never gonna get that fully upgraded. S6 is pure trash. Um, BMW 320D X drive, four wheel drive, standard 85 handling. I think it requires some criteria. I would say borderline rightly rated. As a 67, I think it's okay. But, you know, with the fact that it is a 67 means that nobody probably wants to use it and it probably wouldn't make much of a difference. And that's the problem with top drives. If you are that lower RQ, you're just not gonna get that use until you become easier to upgrade. But if I'm staying true <clears throat> to the name of my rankings, I genuinely believe that BMW 320D is rightly rated. It is a competitive RQ67 for what it is. Anyway, moving on, the BMW M340D X-Drive Saloon requires some criteria, but I did use it in a special tag challenge recently. I don't think it's severely overrated, um, but I don't think it's the best thing in the world either. Um, this one, four-wheel drive, standard 84 handling, I'm gonna say requires some criteria, just handles. The handling could be better, I would think. Again, I don't use that car often as well, but then again, you know, and, and you gotta think about it this way too, it's, it's Japanese, right? So it's competing directly with the uh, Subaru Legacy BW, which is a, a head over heels better car. So I'm, I'll put it in requires some record here. I don't think it's bad. Uh, moving on is the BMW 330i Saloon. Ugh, rear wheel drive. I mean, it's 87 handling, but uh, I think it's severely overrated. Now moving on, the Mitsubishi Lancer. I unpacked this recently in my most recent opening. Really happy to get that. I wanna see how it compares to this Ultra Air variant. Uh, it has one more handling and a lower zero to 60. I mean, again, it looks rightly rated, but it's just the RQ that it's in. You know, like there are there are way better cars to use. Even though that this looks like a pretty decent 71, you could just be using the 76s and the 79s, whether it's the Subarus or the Mitsubishis and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, but yeah, it, it is rightly rated. So accurate to its name, I'm gonna put it there. Moving, moving on, BMW, maybe maybe I should change rightly rated to something else. Maybe I should change it to like, maybe it requires some criteria to be rightly rated. That will be a note for another video because this is maybe just versatile, right? Just versatile. 
Uh, moving on, BMW M550 D X Drive Saloon. It's got a low zero to sixty, decent top speed. Um, I'm gonna put it in requires some criteria. Mitsubishi Lancer R S Dash Two Evolution Six, four point seven eighty six. Again, not that bad, but as a 75, I think it's flying too close to the sun. Just use the higher RQ stuff, like the, I don't know, the, the Mitsubishi Lancer. I think the, the best ones is the 77. I think the 79, yeah, the Lancer Evolution X. So the X, I'm gonna put it in highly versatile. Um, the Lancer Evolution 8 FQ300, 4.886. I'm gonna move it down one for now. Uh, look at the higher RQ of things. Actually, this one, yeah, so this one, I'll put it in Riley rates it. The Lancer Evolution 8 FQ300, I'm gonna move down to require some criteria. Um, looking at the stats, this just looks like the better car to use. I don't care, this is more MRA. I think the only reason why this 77 is because it's 157 for a top speed and this is 112, but that doesn't matter in a city streets or city streets small scenario. Um, then we have the BMW M340i X Drive Saloon. Oh God, we have a lot of BMWs, don't we? Um, 4.284 four wheel drive. It's, it's okay, it requires some criteria. M3 Competition Saloon is highly versatile. The thing is fantastic. The 330e X Drive Saloon. Um, again, the best one is this one, the 530D. I'm gonna put that in rightly rated. The 330E, unfortunately, I'm gonna put down it's severely overrated. It flies too close to the sun, not severely, sorry, it requires some criteria. It flies too close to the sun at 75 RQ as well. There's gotta be some kind of cutoff. The only reason why these two epics kind of made the cut is because they are mid to low range epics. And within that field of mid to low range epics, they do excel. Uh, unfortunately, the niche that they excel in is not that popular, but I think it is fair to put them in rightly rated. If there was an event, where it was like epic only, but you can only use like up to RQ72. I think that these cars might shine if, you know, the event works in their favor. But then also that, that begs the question, again, <laughs> they, it could be bro, they made it the only option, right? Because Hutch has to tailor make so many different requirements for these two cars to shine. So honestly speaking, I, I can't, it just doesn't feel right putting them there. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring them down. E even though that they are good for their respective RQs, people are just not gonna use them that much. Because people are, the way the game is designed, people are just always gonna use the best of the best. The, uh, speaking of the best of the best, I'm bringing the 78 up here as well. You can join uh, these in, in, in good company. Um, the Audi S7, oy, severely overrated. Uh, BMW M550, I'm gonna say 3.682. I'm gonna put that in, and it requires some criteria perhaps. It looks severely better. And the S7, <laughs> both four wheel drive, more performance. I believe both are low. I mean, if, if this is medium, then this is just bad. Uh, then we have the BMW 730D X Drive. No, severely overrated. 76 handling for 76 RQ, not good enough. Uh, Audi S7, not good enough as well. Uh, BMW 740 lo the Long, the LDX Drive. Oh my God, it's, it's, it's gonna be really painful just saying these names over and over and over. Say these really fast, right? All these BMW names. BMW M550 D X Drive Saloon. BMW M550 I X Drive Saloon. BMW 740 LD X Drive. BMW M340 D. It just goes on and on and on and on. It feels like I'm talking about the same car over and over. But then again, I'm not a BMW nerd. So, you know, if this was Mercedes, I would know the difference between an E220, E200, E250, 300, 350, etc., etc. So, you know, if you're a BMW nerd, you'll, you'll, you'll get it. Um, this one has a very low 0 to 60, and I'm inclined to bump it up one. Ooh, it's, a, it's decent in the city, street small. I'm gonna leave it at requires some criteria for now. Okay, moving on to legendaries, Panamera, bro, they made the only option. I'm, I'm gonna be brutal, man. A lot of these legendaries, I'm not gonna get a lot of use out of it. Oh, I forgot about this Lancer GSR. Uh, it's average. Um, then we got the 745. Yeah, that's trash too. The 330D is great though. That's highly versatile in my opinion. The Sky Active is pretty good. I'll put that in rightly rated. Um, the Lancer, I would say is rightly rated, but then there's a better option, which, which we put in highly versatile. Um, that's a piece of shit. Uh, Porsche Panamera, slightly better. Um, I'm gonna say like requires some criteria. Uh, Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution X, again, if you can max out this baby, you'll get some use out of it. But at the end of the day, if you need to use a medium ground clearance uh, Mitsubishi in the dry, you're better off just using the off-roaders. And then you can also, there's an added like bonus of adding those off-roaders. You can use those off-roaders in, in, you know, off-roads in ours as well. Um, then we got the BMW to end things off. The 750i X Drive, it's pretty good. But I wouldn't give it a highly versatile. I'll give it in rightly rates. 
rates it. So I got the hiccups coming in. BMW 545e X Drive Saloon, average, and the M3 Competition M, rightly rated. I don't think it's that great. The fact that it's so close uh, in terms of stats to its real drive counterpart. Like, like, look at this, right? Same, same top speed, same handling. The Epic actually has a better MRA. The only difference is that one car is four wheel drive and it's a 0 0.3 second lower zero to 60. Does that, does that mean that there should be a 15 RQ difference? I don't think so, right? Um, so yeah, I'm gonna bump that, I'm bump that, bump that down. Um, this thing does not be, should not be 90, I think. Um, but anyway, guys, that's going to be it for today. I would say that it is a pretty meh pack. It's funny because when I, when I came into recording this, I had high hopes for it, but that's because I'm also biased towards saloon cars. I love saloons, but when you look at it at a wider scope, there is a lot of just mediocrity. Um, I would say maybe not that much crap level cars that we've seen in other tri series and there are a decent amount of good cars that you can get But not as much as I had expected um, But overall, I think it's, it's yeah, it's a, it's a meh pack. It's not the best thing in the world, not the worst thing in the world um, Definitely, you know one that you know has some really good cars for you to unpack and I can understand why this is the chosen requirement right before an upcoming update because i can see people spending on this because if you unpack something like a, a lancer or the mitsubishi lancer evolution the, sta the standard lancers are the off-road lancers because they're both called lancers right so the off-road ones are the standard ones then you're basically set for the saloon niche for god knows how long you know um these cars are pioneers in their field so the payoff here is high i'll put it that way but anyway guys that's gonna be it for today uh, you've already seen the handle i'm using for the final hopefully i can snag the prize car but time will tell anyway i hope you guys have a great day and stay safe wash your hands and blossom out peace Bro, this song just makes me so happy. <laughs> me too. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly. Got a jetbox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies. They so fine. Imagine being Asian in the 50s, looking nippy, leather jacket, looking sleek, look like Presley, look so deadly. Got a jukebox back at home, feeling jazzy, turn it on and play it slow, like the movies with the ladies. They so fine. Sit back, relax in my Bonneville Pontiac Hold tight all night, cruise to Jacksonville Atlantic